Okay, we're on section 1.4, solving equations. I'm sorry, not solving equations, but just regular old equations of lines. I want to talk more about the lines themselves. How do you find the equations of lines given certain information and so on. So that's actually where we're going to start. We're going to start off by finding the equation of a line given a slope and a y-intercept. Okay, so that's going to be our first example. Example one, find the equation of the, of the line that has a slope of two sevenths and a y-intercept of zero negative six. Okay, so, all right, remember slope is m and when you have the y-intercept, the y-value of that point is b. So therefore, I have m and I have b. Remember, the equation of a line can be written in slope-intercept form. which is y equals mx plus b. Notice I have m and I have b, so it's just really a matter of putting it all together. y equals 2 sevenths x plus negative 6. Well, that's just minus 6. Okay, so that would be my uh, equation for the line that has a slope of 2 over 7 and has a y-intercept of 0, negative 6. Okay, and it's in slope-intercept form. Um, notice something I do want to point out. Every time you write out the equation of a line, you will always have a y and an x present, okay? Um, well, at least, yeah, any line that's not horizontal or vertical, you will have a y and an x present, okay? You're never going to have all the numbers. So what I don't want you to do is say this is x and this is y, and so therefore, we have negative six is equal to two over seven times zero minus six, right? This is not an equation of a line. It is an equation, but it's not the equation of a line, okay? So, y equals 2 sevenths x minus 6. Example 2. We are given a slope of negative 4 and a y-intercept of 0, negative 3 over 2. Okay, this is just as simple as the last problem because I'm given m and I'm given b. So if I'm trying to plug it into y equals mx plus b, I have y equals negative 4x plus negative 3 over 2, or minus 3 over 2. Okay, don't let the fraction throw you off there. <clears throat> okay, example 3 requires more work. Because we're given a slope of negative 2. But this time we're not given the y-intercept. We're just given a point that lies on the line. Negative five, one. I can tell it's not an intercept. It's not the y-intercept because this is not zero right here, right? It's negative five. Okay, so we can still use that y equals mx plus b to figure this out. All right, so slope is negative two. We have m, that's good. So y equals negative two x plus b. Okay, remember, if this is the equation of the line, right, if the left side equals the right side, and this is an x and a y that lies on that line, if I plug those numbers in, it will give me an equation that I know has to be true. Okay, so 1 for y, negative 2, negative 5 for x, plus b. That equation has to be true. Well, if that's the case, then I can find b. Negative 2 times negative 5 is a positive 10. And if I subtract 10 from both sides, 1 minus 10 is negative 9. So now I have b. y equals m, negative 2, x plus b, so minus 9. Do another one. Example four. Uh, the slope this time is two thirds. The y intercept is negative four, negative five. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing. Oh, I'm sorry, not the y intercept. No, 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 no. That is just a point on the line. Again, this is not zero, so that's not a y intercept. Okay, so y equals mx plus b. 
I know that if I plug this in for x and this in for y, this equation will have to be true. So negative 5 is equal to 2 thirds times x, which is negative 4, plus b. 2 thirds times negative 4 is negative 8. And then I add 8 over 3 to both sides. All right, so that's tricky. Off to the side here, I'll work that out. Negative 5 uh, plus 8 over 3. I'm going to rewrite negative 5 as something over 3. Something over 3. To figure out that something, I'm going to multiply by 3. So 3 times 5 is 15. So it's negative 15 over 3 plus 8 over 3. Negative 15 over 3 plus 8 over 3 is negative 7 over 3. There we go. That would be B, negative 7 over 3. And you leave it like that. Don't simplify it or write it as a mixed number. We don't we usually do mixed numbers in algebra or really above. Okay, Mixed numbers are pretty much a done deal at this point. All right, so Y equals 2 thirds X minus 7 over 3. All right, and that brings up the fifth example here, probably the most complicated type of question when it comes to finding the equation of the line. Okay, this time I'm not given a slope. I'm given two points, negative 3, comma 7, and negative 1, negative 5. All right, so... Think about it though, we do have a formula for slope. Remember the formula for slope. Subtract the y's, find the change in y, find the change in x's. Might help if I labeled these. So here's my first x and my first y, my second x and my second y. So my slope has to be negative five minus seven over negative one minus negative three. Negative 5 minus 7 is negative 12. And this minus negative here becomes a plus, so negative 1 plus 3 is a positive 2. Negative 12 divided by 2 is negative 6. So m is negative 6. Okay, so now, like the last problem, when you started off with a slope and then we're given a point, I have a slope and I have two points. Either one actually works. So you just kind of pick whichever one you think looks nicer. I think the second one looks like a little bit easier to work with. One and five, negative one and negative five actually. But so I'm gonna use this information here. M is equal to negative six. My X that I'm going to use is equal to negative one. My Y I'm gonna use is negative five. So let's plug all that in. negative 5 equals negative 6 times negative 1 plus b. Negative 6 times negative 1 is a positive 6. Subtract 6 from both sides. Negative 5 minus 6 is negative 11. So b is negative 11. Could have also worked with the other point. Let's, let's give that one a try. I'll do that in red so we don't mix it up. Uh, let's say we use negative 3 and positive 7. So watch what happens here. Um, positive 7 is equal to negative 6 times negative 3 plus b. Negative 6 times negative 3 is a positive 18. Subtracting 18 from both sides, 7 minus 18 is negative 11. Okay, so the point that you choose doesn't actually matter here. Whatever one looks easier, you should go with that one. Okay, so that gives me my answer, right? My equation, y equals negative 6x minus 11. Okay, so then the next part of this lesson deals with parallel and perpendicular lines. So I should go through these one at a time. Parallel, 
are lines that look like this, right? They run side by side forever. They never cross each other, parallel. More importantly, they have the same slope. Different intercepts, right? Different y-intercepts, but the same slope. Lines are perpendicular if they cross each other at a perfect 90 degree angle, right? 90 degrees. Okay, so if they make a good, you know, perfect corner, 90 degree angle, they're called, they're called perpendicular. Okay, more importantly, they have opposite slopes. So they're the same numbers, but they're opposite signs. One's a positive and one's a negative. And they're reciprocals of each other, or they're flipped over. Okay, so in other words, something like one fifth and well let's say not say one fifth let's say two fifths and negative five over two right we have a positive and a negative and they're flipped over okay that would be an example of perpendicular slopes oh slopes i should write the word slopes they have opposite signs the slopes have opposite signs and are flipped over all right so let's do an example okay typically we want to be able to identify whether or not two equations are parallel or perpendicular. So let's determine that. Y equals three over two X minus eight. Y equals eight plus three over two X. Sometimes you see they're grouped together like that. Okay. Now, if I look at these two, I wanna compare their slopes. I'm trying to, trying to determine if they're parallel, perpendicular, or just neither one of those. Right? They could just be ordinary lines. One goes this way, one goes like that. They don't cross at a 90 degree angle and they don't run side by side, right? So I'm checking for that. So the slope of the first one, slope one is three over two. Slope two is three over two. Same slope, different y-intercept, right? But same slope. So we'd say that these are parallel. Pretty easy. What about this? 2x minus 5y equals negative 3. Oh, you knew it couldn't have been that easy every time. 2x plus 5y equals 4. Okay, let's rearrange both of them. Okay, so I'll do these one at a time. 2x minus 5y equals negative three. Let's get y by itself. I'm gonna start off by subtracting two x from both sides. Okay, then I'm gonna divide everything by negative five. Negative two over negative five is a positive two fifths. Negative three over negative five is a positive three fifths. So that first equation is y equals 2 fifths x plus 3 fifths. The slope of that first one is 2 fifths. Let's rearrange the second one. Start off by subtracting 2x from both sides. So we have 5y equals negative 2x plus 4. Divide everything by five. The slope of the second is negative two fifths. Okay, let's compare. We have opposite signs, okay? So we know they're not the same, so we, we can't say they're parallel, right? They're not the same, so they're not parallel. Remember the rule for perpendicular. Opposite signs, which is what we have, right? We have a positive and a negative. Opposite signs. But is one the reciprocal of the other? No, right, they're not flipped over. If these were perpendicular, you would have negative five over two. Pretty much exactly what I wrote a second ago, right? Um, but that's not what we have. We have negative two over five. So if it's not parallel and it's not perpendicular, you would say that it would. they are neither parallel nor perpendicular. Uh, 
Uh, let's do example eight. Y equals negative three X plus one. Y equals negative one third X plus one. Aha, so these are in slope intercept form, so I don't have to rearrange anything here. The slope of that first one is just negative three. The slope of the second one is negative one third. Okay, uh, these are actually reciprocals, right? That's three over one and one over three. So they are reciprocals of each other, but they're not opposite signs. Okay, so they're not perpendicular because the signs are the same, but the numbers themselves are not the same. So it's not parallel either. So they are neither. All right, and one more example. Y equals seven minus X. Y equals X plus three. I wanna do this one cause it's a little, it looks a little tricky. All right, so the slope of the first one here is this understood negative one. The slope of the second one is this understood positive one. Okay, so we're gonna rule out parallel. They can't be parallel because they're not the same. Okay, but maybe they're perpendicular. Okay, well, we do have opposite signs, right? They're both opposite sign. We have a negative and a positive. So, so far, so good. Are they reciprocals of each other? That's the tricky part. Remember, this one here is just negative one over one. This one here is one over one. Is one over one the reciprocal of one over one? If you flipped over this, do you get this? Ignoring the negative, of course. And the answer is yes, right? They are reciprocals of each other, even though they are, they kind of look weird, right? They're just one. All right, so they are reciprocals of each other. We have a positive and a negative. Therefore, we have perpendicular lines. Okay, and that is section 1.4.